Good afternoon to you. Mark Sutter with HurricaneTrack.com here with your Hurricane Outlook and Discussion. It's Wednesday, the 26th of May, 2021, and the good news is, as you would expect for the month of May, I mean, come on, it is May, we don't have much to talk about in the tropics, especially in the Atlantic Basin, even though the National Hurricane Center started issuing their tropical weather outlooks early this year on May 15th, with the exception of Anna, which was one of those weird systems that develops in the subtropics you know this time of year we don't expect much to happen and that certainly seems to be the case going forward so let's take a look at the satellite animation courtesy of the great levi cowan's website tropicaltidbits.com and what a nice shot this is infrared technology showing us the cloud temperatures denoted by the different color patterns and what can we see? Well, we can see a very stable air mass all through the main development region, which, again, you would expect to see in the month of May. If we had something developing out here now, I would be very worried about the future of all of us that live along the coast. But such is not the case. The reality is there's nothing going on out there nice and dry across this region. And you can just tell, looking at the satellite shot here, that it's a fairly dry, stable air mass. You've got this kind of low cloud deck in here. There's probably some Saharan air layer mixed in there, some dust, mid-level dry air. It's just not time yet. Water temperatures are still warming in that region. And again, it's only May 26. But nevertheless, here we are. We discuss things, whatever those things may be. And sometimes it's not much. There's a tropical wave out here as well kind of hard to see it because of all the dry air around, but the Tropical Analysis and Forecast Branch analyzed a tropical wave. We might see it on the 850 millibar GFS. No, actually we won't because I'm going to show the western part of the basin. So never mind, but trust me, somewhere in this region there is a tropical wave aloft without much moisture associated with it. Meanwhile, down to the south, the intertropical convergence zone shows up very nicely with the most convectively active portion of that zone over here in the far southeastern Pacific with three areas of somewhat concentrated showers and thunderstorms. A couple of these might try to develop as we can see from the National Hurricane Center in just a moment. First of all, nothing in the Atlantic for the next 48 hours, nothing for the next five days, but in the eastern Pacific, a couple of areas to watch, nothing in the 48 hour time slot yet. But if we go to the five-day graphical, there it is. A couple of yellow areas, our lemons, if you will. One of them 20%, the other still stuck at 30. And really not a lot of overall bullish computer guidance. You know, There's not a lot of support for these to just explosively develop. Part of that is the time of year we're in. It's only the end of May. And part of it is just the overall favorability is not that prominent right now in this region Nevertheless, I do think one of these will develop and it could become a hurricane, believe it or not. It's just going to take some time, it seems, as this more favorable upward motion pattern works its way from the west over here, gradually moving into the east across this area, creating a more favorable upward motion area through here. And these should go on to develop at least one of them over time. So let's look at the GFS here for the Atlantic Basin. This is the 5,000 foot level of the atmosphere, 850 millibars. And again, we're looking for any areas of concentrated vorticity, and you don't see much of it at all down in the deep tropics right now. Just a nice shot of trade winds coming across here as evidenced by the wind barbs on the chart here. Again, this is about 5,000 feet up. Here's a mid-level low pressure system, mid to upper level low. There's a high pressure area here, another high pressure area here. That's why it's so hot in the southeast. And sandwiched in between is this little piece of energy here, mid to upper level low. You can just tell by looking at the chart here, there's some vorticity associated with that, some energy in the atmosphere there and the counterclockwise rotation. Sometimes, especially later in the season, if these persist, they can work their way down to the surface because this represents cold air right now. There's a lot of cold air in the upper atmosphere right there rotating around. Every once in a while, especially later on in August and September, these can work their way down to the surface because you've got all that latent heating st sticking around, you know, hanging around in the lower levels of the atmosphere, and these can kind of warm from the bottom up and transition over into tropical systems, but I don't see that happening. 
with this particular feature. So let's put this into motion frame by frame. You can see that system kind of fills in and moves away and no other areas down there for the next 48 hours. There's 72 hours. And yeah, I mean, the Atlantic Basin's nice and quiet. We do get kind of this backdoor cold front that comes in this way. It's kind of a trough up here to put an end to all of this sweltering late May heat. I mean, it's in the 90s again here in Wilmington today, Wilmington, North Carolina, where I am. 96 hours to day five there. Nothing in the Atlantic Basin, just a nice strong area of high pressure sitting out here over the Atlantic. The trade winds will come in nice and brisk through this area. And this is Memorial Day, May 31st. So a nice warm Memorial Day for Florida. Uh, the southwest, southeasterly flow coming in, pumping heat and humidity into the deep south, but hopefully tolerable. 80s where it should be and 90s where they should be, but nothing that we can't handle heat-wise just yet. Uh, it's been really hot lately, though. But what about this? That is what we talk about when we look for these areas of vorticity that bundle up. So if we switch over to that basin, this is the eastern Pacific Baja Peninsula and the west coast of Mexico there, and then down towards Guatemala, El Salvador, and Central America over here. So I'm going to leave this outlined for you and just kind of draw this out. And then let's look at this frame by frame and watch what happens. And by the way, this is your area to watch right through here. And you can see that this little string of vorticity finally gets closed off with a system there by about 72 hours, a couple of systems. But the easternmost one becomes dominant. That's where water temperatures are the warmest. The upper level winds and whatnot are the most favorable. And that, my friends, is the signature right there of a tropical cyclone in the 850 millibar level of the GFS. That's what they look like. This is really neat to be able to see the layers of the atmosphere like this. You can look at the surface, you can look at the precip pattern, and the upper levels, you can look at all kinds of levels. Uh, and the atmosphere, of course, is layered like onions, right? And what was it that Shrek and Donkey talked about? Parfaits or something? Anyhow, I digress. It is. It's the same thing as onions. We, the atmosphere has layers. The Earth itself has layers geologically. The Earth's crust down to the Earth's core. And so the atmosphere is made up of these different layers. My favorite to watch and track the development of these systems is that 850 millibar level. It's just nice and easy to see these systems try to close off. And we're going out to about 120 hours. And let's just go on out to a week. There's day five, there's day six, and then finally day seven. It turns back perhaps more towards Mexico there. If we just rewind the clock and see how this evolves over time. Yeah, maybe something to watch after about a week for our friends down here in Mexico. Maybe, you know, somewhere in this area, possibly. You know, this is a week out. We know how many... Uh, iterations of this model will have over the next several days. The GFS has run four times a day. Climatologically, these are typically expected to move on out into the Pacific. But if you get enough of a weakness over here, there's a high pressure area there and a little bit of troughing in between another high pressure area over here, then yes, these can slip in between the two. But this is one week out, roughly. Actually, it's more than a week out at this point. There, 168 hours out. We'll see. I wouldn't start worrying about it too much down in Mexico. Something to monitor, and that's my job. That's what I'll do for you. Elsewhere, it is still severe weather season. Check this out. I wish I was out there today. Wow, moderate risk for northwest Kansas, southern Nebraska, in the extreme eastern tip there, northeastern tip of Colorado, bottom line. It's going to be an active day in the plains with lots of uh, potential gorilla hail, bigger than your fist. And maybe some tornadoes out there. A lot of chasers are going to be out there. That's a beautiful part of the country. I was just out there recently with Brent and a few weeks before that with another one of our supporters, Matt, helping out. Uh, really fascinated by what happens in the alley. And we're going to do more of that next year, more studying, more observation, more live reporting, just kind of figuring out my place out there. What can I do to kind of contribute to the science and the awareness and the beauty of it. You know, lots of people take pictures and videos and time lapses. How can I stand out? I want to try to figure that out. And this year, these couple of expeditions out there are helping me in that direction. Wish I was out there today, but I got too much work to do here. And I'll talk about that in just a moment. Nevertheless, moderate risk. 
and the tornado threat fairly substantial there in the heart of northwestern Kansas, west central Kansas, wind threat from downburst winds, straight line winds, you name it, and the hail threat, you betcha. So look out if you're out there. Be careful. You chasers generally know what you're doing, and um, just watch out. You know, Watch out for the other guy especially. Tomorrow, the threat, if you want to call I don't like that word threat. The storm chances move south uh, to Oklahoma, parts of Kansas, Arkansas, Missouri for the enhanced area. But even the slight risk on down to the dry line in Texas over here is interesting enough, depending on where you are, the tornado threat. You know, substantial enough in northeast Oklahoma, wind from straight line winds and hail. I mean, really, this is going to be a couple of days here of potential problems, especially with that gorilla hail and the tornado threat. We have not had a significant major outbreak of tornadoes in the Great Plains in a long time. I can't remember the last big trough that dug in with long track violent tornadoes being in the description from the Storm Prediction Center. Nobody's complaining. Don't get me wrong. It's just been a while. So we're seeing this uptick here, and it's going to cause some damage. That hail, and Brent and I and Matt and I saw the results of that, that the hail can cause a lot of damage, billions of dollars of damage a year, not only to structures, cars, but also livestock. The cattle that's out there, the wind energy, uh, wind farms that are out there, they have to deal with this. So this all impacts more than just what we see on social media with the dramatic pictures and the video and the chase accounts and sometimes the drama that goes with it. I try to avoid drama. If I can, I let nature provide the drama when possible. Day three, it calms down a bit, thank goodness, but still a general thunderstorm risk across a pretty good part of the country going forward. So remember, spc.noaa.gov, if you're wondering where you get this information, for yourselves, that is it. Speaking of information, I've got a new podcast that I've neglected to promote adequately, but it's growing a little bit every day. It's called Hurricane Season, the podcast. And it's every single day, every morning, I produce this little audio digest of what I'm looking at in the tropics. Most of the time, it's going to be very quick, three, four, five minutes tops. But once we have something develop, I will go into more details about what I will be watching for that development in the coming hours and days, sort of these keys to the game, if you will. This is how you start your day, with an audio podcast, if you're so willing, from yours truly. It's on pretty much anywhere that you get podcasts now, Apple, Google, and it's funny, yesterday in my kid's playroom, we have one of those Google things, then you say, hey, Google, and probably some of you use Google is perked up right now, but I said, hey, Google, play Hurricane Season, the podcast. And sure enough, it said, you know, now playing Hurricane Season, the podcast from Apple Podcasts. Or, I'm sorry, <laughs> from Google Podcasts. I got Apple on the brain. I have an iPhone, so, you know, what can I say? But it played it, and my daughter rolled her eyes, like, oh, you got to be kidding me, Dad. And I just wanted to make sure it worked. And it does. It's on Apple, Google, Spotify, and you can even ask your Alexa to play it as well. Um... It's just a way to start the day. You know, what am I looking at? And maybe a couple of trivia tips and inside information on what I'm thinking, you know, whatever. It's just a good digest, and it's nice and short compared to these discussions, which are video, obviously. And I can show you graphics and satellite animations here. Hurricane Season, the podcast, sort of sets the tone for the day. So subscribe to that wherever you get your podcasts and help it grow. And it's absolutely free. And it is supported, as all of my work is, through Patreon, patreon.com slash hurricane track. If you want to get involved, we've got a lot of neat things that we've been doing and a lot of cool stuff coming. Once we get to June 1st, I will do a long update, probably about an hour, um, of all kinds of stuff. Looking ahead to the season, some of the stuff about what we've done in the past. It's going to be more like a production, not a show. A show makes me think of something you pay tickets for and you, you pay for a ticket and go see it on a stage. But yeah, like a production, you know, like an hour-long hurricane season kickoff show. Not live. Too many variables to do it live. But I'm going to do that on June 1st. That's coming up in just a few days. And we will be ready for the 2021 hurricane season, at least as ready as we can be. I'm on Facebook and Twitter and YouTube. Hurricane Track is the brand. Subscribe on YouTube, like the videos, help the algorithms do what they do best, 
and promote what we're doing here. We've got a great group of people following. You are part of it, and I appreciate that very much. I am Mark Sutta for HurricaneTrack.com. I'll be back with more for you tomorrow.